let me introduce you to one of my favourite, most versatile features of traction waveform. Rex. These things are amazing. If we had a plug-in here, and we could go down to plug-in Rex, we can do new from preset, and you've got all these presets there, or we can do create new empty rack. So for now, we'll do create an empty rack. So essentially, the way a rack operates is Make it big so that I can see it. So just like your plugins go from left to right, so your rack goes left to right. So this is the input. So you connect this to an output. And you connect this to an output. That's the direction of flow. And you can add all sorts of other things in here, as you'll see in a minute. Something came up just today on the Facebook group where somebody wanted to have the direct output of a track going to the left hand side and they wanted to have just the reverb on the right hand side with none of the, none of the dry signal. Now there's a couple of ways you can do that but to do it within racks is probably one of the most straightforward ways. The first thing we need to do is get a reverb so we can add let's just add traction zone reverb here now, if you choose to do auto connect, it'll connect it up like that, which is fine. So he wants the left side to not go through reverb. So we'll disconnect the left. And we'll just put that left to that left. And now if we were to get... Let's get a nice loop. No, that's nice. Let's do trumpet. And let's make a loop of that. So press O there and press L makes it a loop. This is what it would sound like without the reverb at all. If we want the reverb to only affect the right hand side then we can do this. So these are the left left and right ins and they're the left and right outs and this is the right out and that's the left out. The other thing you need to do is make sure that the dry signal is all the way down and you can put the wet signal up to wherever do it to taste. So that dry signal when it's there listen to it That gives you a dry signal plus the effect. Without the dry signal, only wet. So that's just using the pen on the regular channel, just to hear the, the right hand side only. So that's about the simplest way that you can do it. But another way that you can do the same thing is you could do a parallel type of thing where you connect up the left and the right um, and you do, so if you look at this as a whole separate flow. So imagine, imagine there's water going from left to right and that flow of water is going through these two hoses and then you connect off a new hose on the left and a new hose on the right. And then what we can do is we can make waveform effects and we can do a volume and pan. And I can do that and hit D and we get a second one. So now we've got two volume and pans and what we can do change that MIDI output as well. Apparently the MIDI output helps with latency. 
So you connect up like that and depending on what direction you're going to have things moving in, we're going to put that to the left and the right and then have this flow go outwards to the left and the right and then this direct one as well I'd like to flow that through one of these as well so when I go left right left to out right to out and there we've got two different volumes and pans so he wanted the left channel to be completely dry and he wanted the right channel to be completely wet so this should be the same effect So there you go, it's great for that sort of context. If you've got Waveform Pro, you, you've also got access to face plates, which are really interesting things. So you click on face plate. This will be locked when you open it first. Press the lock, which gives you an open lock. And then if you press this, it spreads it all out. And if we increase these, you get more dots and we want more dots because if we want more flexibility on what sort of amount of controls we put in there. So let's put in a parameter here. And let's hold control, bring it over, do it again, do it again, and again, and again. That's enough to begin with. Drag another box here, make a slider, right click, you can change it to a different style such as that, hold control, bring that over there, so I'll put them over here, so you can move them around wherever you like, and we could move those down to wherever we want as well. So we can do it like that. So let's move that over here. No, that doesn't look great right now, but when you do that, it just turns into this. So assigning the parameters, that's the next thing. So this one, can assign it to the first volume and pan. And pan. And this one will assign it to the second volume and pan. So you see that's all the way over to the right, that's all the way over to the left. It automatically goes to wherever the things are set up there. As you can see now, I'm going to move that a bit. If we go back to our face plate of the main thing, you see that that's moved. So, or if we click this lock here, you can see that slider there move as I move this. And this volume likewise should move that volume up above. Okay, let's assign some parameters over here. Room size, damping, level, make a new one of those. Dry level, so it can be width, freeze. Okay, the freeze one is a button. So maybe we'll get rid of this. Do, do, do. Remove control. We'll make a button here for freeze. We'll change the style. So the skin. Freeze. That'll do. Move these further over. space. Control and drag and we can resize it then like this. Set text. Dry volume. Control and drag. 
set text. Actually, it's probably meant pen, isn't it? So let's do that. Let's change this. We can change the background as well. So let's let's do that background. Let's choose a color. And make it something more interesting. Oh, do something like blue. Looks disgusting right now, maybe, but when we do this, it turns into a blue thing. Let's make this large text. Looks slightly better. Yep. And you can save these for use at a later time. We can use that faceplate down there as well. So this doesn't even need to be open. And we've got all these controls. It's pretty simple to set up, right? So I'll play it and I'll play around with the settings. There's so many uses that you can have with that. And if we were to save this now, let's open the rack. We we'll save it down here. So we can save that as, see all of these, they're the ones from Traction themselves. Create new preset. Let's call it a simple reverb rack. And we can add tags. So our rack is there. We can do reverb. Oh, it's funny there's not one there. Traction reverb, that'll do. Or you can make your own comma. Just do reverb. It doesn't exist yet, but we can make it. Okay. Oh, look at this. So the MIDI input is only going to that input there, and it's not going any further. So if what I've read is correct, then that MIDI needs to follow the track of where it's, where it's going. So it goes right from there. Same as the audio. Follow where the audio is going. And it goes out here and to here. And likewise, there's an, another MIDI signal that goes out to that one, or audio signal at least, and it ends here. And that's it. And if you want to add some text, actually, this is handy too. Waveform utilities, I think, text. So what we could do is just put that up there. You can add whatever text you want. We can just add the text in here and we can say simple reverb rack parallel reverb with blend and face splits. No, so that should be there anytime we want to click it and it'll come up like that, tell us what it is. If we want to make an actual rack out of this stuff then it's quite simple too. So you click each individual one, the faceplate, do that. Um, if you click on this thing down here, I think sometimes it's like three dots or something like that, but here it now seems to be a little page and load plugin preset, generic preset, factory, and reverb. Okay. And then plug in parameters. I t 
tend to want to hit cancel on that because it does strange stuff. No, does this change the right things? Decay, wet, damping, dry. Okay. So we would have to reassign these. But anyway, let's just um, imagine that we've filled in all of that. And if we wanted to do a faceplate for this, we can just make one. Big parameter there, assign it. Big slider, change the style. I don't know why it doesn't make a slider as the main thing, but linear, horizontal. And assign that parameter to pen. So that's that one. And we can call this dry. So does it look weird? It's not bad. I did the dry all the way to the left. And now we want a new faceplate for this one. So we'll do the same. Look, we make it a bit different. Make it within this area here. And this stuff is totally worth it, by the way. It's a bit laborious in the beginning. As you, uh, set text. And there we go. So we can open this whole unit up as a rack, as an actual rack, instead of being this thing with all the wires and stuff in. So as you see now, whatever you've clicked on in here will change down here. So reverb, that gives me that reverb. Click on the open space, it gives me my combined reverb and pans. Click on one of those, it gives me my volume and pan. That gives me my other volume and pan. So then, to see this as a kind of a rack, a rack of units, Show stack editor. And now, what we've got then is this. We can close that down. We can do our stack editing. We've got our reverb, our volume, our other volume. And if we've labeled things, we'll be able to see. Oh, this one didn't get. I don't think that's doing anything. Simple reverb rack. We can turn things on and off as well. Click on here. And that opens up instead. Or click the eye, switch editors, and it brings me to here. And now if we wanted to add EQ to the reverb, we can do that simply by this. It doesn't have to be all those waveform stuff actually, let's see. Let's do the traction, this kind of EQ. And we'll come out here. Change those connections. In here. This here. That one no longer goes that way. Now that goes there. Now if you follow the red lines, it goes the same way as the blue lines. You can move things around as well and you can see all the wires moving with it. So you don't have to be that confused about what's going on. They can get quite complex, so they can, once you start doing parallel stuff, putting parallel synthesizers and stuff in there is particularly fun. But that's for another video. So check that out, and I'll see you soon. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up and the subscribe. Perfect. See you then.